Hello, hello, and happy holidays. I'm Jeff Sass, CMO of .art Registry. And on behalf of Obi and the entire .art team, I want to welcome you to our first Meet the Dot Artists webinar. Dot .art Registry has over 250,000 in our community, including many talented artists. And we want to give you a chance to meet some of them each and every month. And we want to give our artists a chance to share their talents with you. So that's why we're doing this Meet the Dot Artists webinar, and we're excited to have you here for our first one. We're really grateful for all of the members of our community, and we're grateful for you, especially because your support of Dot Art enables us to support the Art Therapy Initiative. The Dot Art family believes very strongly in the healing power of art and the global need for such healing in today's stressful world. Inspired by our founder, Olvi and Rahan's talented daughter, Medina, who has overcome many challenges herself through her art, we've launched the Art Therapy Initiative with a commitment initially of a million dollars for graduate studies in art therapy at George Washington University. And with your continued support, we hope to do much more to spread the value of art therapy and the benefits of art throughout the world. So thank you so much for being here today. Your support of us helps us support the Art Therapy Initiative, and we're very grateful for that. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce our special guest presenter and a great friend to Dot Art. It's Dean Fellis. Dean is the editor in chief of Museum Magazine and senior director of special projects at the American Alliance of Museums. And we're delighted to have Dean with us here today. Dean, over to you. Thanks, Jeff. Um, and it's a pleasure to be with you all. I'm actually here in Washington, D.C., and that's where the American Alliance of Museum is located. So today, I just wanted to provide you a little insight about the American Alliance of my, uh, Museums, myself, Museum Magazine, and then how we involve or how I involve the arts community or artistic community in the production of the magazine. So a little bit about AAM, the American Alliance of Museums. It was founded in 1906 as a membership organization to advance the work of museums and museum professionals that we say like to say from A to Z, art museums to zoos. Since that time, it has grown to represent over 30,000 museums and museum professionals, which make it one of the most largest professional organizations globally for this audience. Its mission is to champion equitable and impactful museums by connecting people, fostering community, learning, and nurturing professional excellence. And some of the ways that it goes about doing this, it informs through research and content like its books, its newsletter, its magazine, provides webinars and online resources. It offers guidance on ethics and standards and professional practice. And it also creates community through online and face-to-face -face networking and also through its AM annual meeting and Museum Expo, which is the largest professional convening of its kind, attracting over 5,000 museum professionals and those um, that support museums globally. A little bit about myself. I um, started at this organization in 1993. I oversaw uh, professional education and meetings for 18 years and then this was sort of a natural uh, progression for me in taking on this role as editor in chief. And um, I work with internally with a content team of two other people and also with a third party that provides editorial and production support for the magazine. So Museum Magazine itself is, of course, it's a membership publication of the organization. Its circulation is about 30,000 museums and museum professionals. They're working in all functional areas, primarily in the United States, although we do have some who are um, part of our community that are uh, not in the United States. Typically, when I'm working on the magazine in general, I want to ensure that it serves as validation and inspiration for the amazing work that museum professionals do and also all those that support them like you the artists and i i want them to feel this is this not only through content but also through the art and imagery that's used for the magazine 
So the magazine is usually between 48 and 56 pages. It, it features articles that typically focus on a different theme each issue. And these themes are identified through communication with various different stakeholders to get a sense about what are some of the current issues that are timely and trending that we might want to focus in on um, in, in the magazine. And we go then ahead and provide that editorial calendar uh, to the field through our various communication networks, but also it it um, will appear on our website. Uh, you could search for it um, in September, do a word search for it on our website. Uh, you just type in editorial calendar and you'll, you will find the themes that will be focused in each calendar year. So um, what we have, have then happened with regard to the content is uh, we announced to the museum field through ver our various communication channels, which can be digital newsletters, uh, our social media channels, and um, um, let them know what that they can search for these, uh, search for the themes of the editorial calendar uh, on our website. And then what we do in, in terms of the magazine, it's and the way we generate content for the magazine is we do a call for for article pitches uh, asking for people if they're doing an, any kind of work that's addressing the annual meeting theme we want them to sit we encourage them to submit a proposal and these are reviewed um, internally and by a committee where um, we ultimately select those articles that will comprise each issue Typically, there are about four or five feature articles in the magazine, including a point of view. And the articles are written, of course, by um, those who are working in the museum field. And typically, we are encouraging to submit artwork and photography to support the narratives of their article. But it's often the case that in any given issue that AM has to do additional research for artwork to support these articles because museums are very, very modest in documenting their work through art or photography. So how I go about selecting images is um, I do a lot of research on that and I'm typically looking at, and this is particularly for the cover, um, I'm looking for art that's going to be uh, ultimately going to be advancing what the theme of that issue is in, in the way it, it, it's in, in its depiction. And I usually I'm doing this through um, research on various sites that include Alamy, Shutterstock and Getty Images. And, um, and then I am also looking at all types of medium in selecting images. So this could be paintings or illustrations or digital images or photography. And then I'm also sometimes viewing websites that represent artists and, um, and search for images on those websites. And then typically what happens is uh, I find an image that I like that's not already on one of the um, websites that I mentioned, like Alamy, Shuttlestock, or Getty Images. I'm reaching out to, if I have an email, I'm reaching out directly to the artist and asking them if they would be willing to submit artwork for the cover. And if that is the case, um, I go ahead then and extend um, a, a contract with them for one-time usage of that image. And then we pay a modest royalty for the use of that image for the magazine. Uh, most of the images, of course, are being done with artists um, and all over the world. Um, but I, I'm having an upcoming issue of the magazine, which is uh, it's focused on Trends Watch, which is on emerging trends um, that are going on globally that have implications for the work that museums do. And um, one of the issues that we're focusing in on on the January, February 2024 issue is artificial intelligence. So 
um, I, I, I diverge from my typical method and work through the artificial intelligence platform mid-journey um, to, su to submit a prompt that I was looking for a particular kind of artwork in, um, in the style of a certain artist and then ultimately it came up with some examples and I used one of those for the cover, but uh, rest assured um, to my artist out there that I, this was sort of an anomaly and I won't be doing that again and that I, will, I would prefer to be working with um, art that's done by the human hand. So um, that's in general the process uh, for the magazine and how I go about selecting the artwork, not only in the cover, but for to support some of the articles. And certainly would love to be working with any artists out there who have artwork that they want to share with me to support uh, specific themes around the magazine. And I would also now, I'd like to turn this conversation over to what our first dot art artist, whose name is Ronan. Tachin. He's an artist, developer, and interactive designer. Yes. Hello, everyone. And uh, thank you, Dean, for this wonderful introduction. I'll just uh, correct. So my last name is Tanchum. It's Ronan Tanchum. And uh, you can look me up uh, in the platforms. I will start by introducing myself. Um, so basically, I'm an artist. Um, I create uh, art digitally um, for the past 15 years. I've uh, started my creative career in, uh, in 3D uh, softwares and, and 3D simulations, where I uh, really professioned at like my expertise um, is to create uh, natural simulations of uh, different things from nature, but synthetically in the computer. And for many years, I worked on uh, a lot of movies um, like Spider-Man, uh, Transformers, Deadpool, uh, etc. And my expertise, again, was to create um, 3D simulations that would look photorealistic for these movies. And um, usually um, this work is, um, it, it includes a lot of like studying of nature before you can reproduce it uh, digitally for the movies. And this is where my origin of my creative uh, comes from. And basically what I've been doing for the past 20 years um, is to study the world and physics. And um, I, I remember when just starting to learn these uh, 3D softwares, like anything I see in the real world would inspire me to go and study why, why it's like that in the real world. And while in the computer, um, everything is perfect. So uh, to achieve a, a natural look for an effect or or for, for my artwork, I would really go into nature and study its imperfections and how I can um, implement those within the computer to create um, natural art and, and um, organic patterns and behaviors in the computer. So I can uh, present my screen here. Oh yeah, I can bring up my screen and I can walk you through uh, some of my work. Um, so basically, yeah, ever since I, um, I um, started doing um, computer art and, um, and simulations, uh, there's a lot of data that I need to manage in order to get to those uh, photorealistic um, um, projects and, and effects. So a lot of my work and practice is around is revolving around data and how I can use data from the real world or synthetic generated data to create um, a, an effect from it that is driven by data. And um, as you can see, um, yeah, this is my uh, movies 
uh, demo reel. So I worked on a, a lot of like uh, explosions and fire and clouds and rain and sparks and and um, and a lot of like natural effects like that. Um, which after almost ten years of creating those effects for large blockbuster movies, I um, I shifted my career uh, towards art and used all um, all that I've learned from uh, from the movie industry to to really uh, come down to the essence of what it is that I want to create and, and to show to the world as my creation and um, and um, along the, along the way I've done many many projects each each project is is kind of trying to tackle the the language of uh, nature and create it synthetically and each project also involves like different techniques and different methods and um, and tools that I, I've been developing and also using so for example in this music video clip I've done this like simulation of a speaker that's inflating in 3d and then uh, basically we printed in a 3d printed each frame of the simulation so we ended up with these statues but then it was filmed in in stop motion um to create the the final animation of the for the movie clip oh, doesn't let me show it so i'll uh, i'll just move forward and um this is my website, uh, ronantantrum.art, which I'm really proud of, and uh, and I really love the the extension. I mean, it really tells what it is that you're coming into, and it's my art practice and my art portfolio, and it really separates this all, all this work from my other um, commercial work, for example. Uh, so to follow up a little bit on what I have here. A, um, in continuation to what Dean was saying. So early use of AI here, I basically um, recreated my uh, artwork uh, using really early um, AI tools that it would interpolate, interpolate my uh, artwork within the style of Van Gogh and Picasso and some of the greatest artists. Um, master artist and as you can see um, the results are really fascinating as well as and um, surprising so I I was really um, drawn to to use more uh, AI within my work but I also uh, love to do physical installations so for example this project is uh, seven um, water containers that are producing interactive bubbles so when you get closer to to each one of these containers the bubbles will, will start uh, generating and it would also generate music so this is a cool physical project that my output was bubbles bits and sounds uh, it wasn't pixels or or a movie like i used to do i kind of try to push myself with uh, more uh, use of, of technology within the work and this was a piece that was done uh, for a museum that was a uh, recent time and um, and also it was uh, and also it was uh, a collaboration with Schweppes so I really really um, come together uh, here I have um, some of my early 3d still work that is researching um, and, and the subject of identity and, and what it is to have digital identities. And this was really the start of uh, 2021 where um, the digital, you know, social media and, and um, metaverse and all these like new things started to pop where uh, people started having um, digital identities and and this is what this project was studying i was basically creating many many of these uh, experiments and then in the end um, i chose 10 of them um 
here I have been uh, creating these um, these characters that are trapped in a, in a 3D nylon, and um, basically, um, yeah, they, they started as an animations, but they uh, also got printed as physical sculptures and as well as uh, AR, so they live in, in the three realms, um, the physical, the digital, and the augmented. Beautiful. Thank, thank you, Ronan. Really, really beautiful, beautiful work, and really interesting to see how you transition through the different mediums. And when we get to the Q&A, I have a question for you about working for the movie studio, so we'll look forward no to problem. that. Thank you yes, so much, uh, Ronan. I want to... Uh, one last thing is uh, recently I've been using uh, code to create works, which is um, just um, just like a website basically, but it's my artwork and uh, it's called generative art. And uh, yeah, I mean you can uh, look cool. it up. And well, everyone, please visit Ronan's website. I want to hand it off to Dean now to introduce our next dot artist. Thank you so much, Ronan, and we'll have time after every artist for a few questions from the audience for you. Thank you, so Jeff. Stand by. Thanks, Thank you Dean. so much, Dean. Thank you. So our our next uh, presenter is Uzlada, and she's an artist and poet. And here she is. Hello, everybody. Um, I do have some Polish ancestry, indeed, but I was actually born in Latvia, and I live in Belgium. Uh, so I don't speak Polish, but uh, anyway, um, I would like to thank you very much, first of all, everybody and Dot Art for this opportunity to talk about my art to um, and to speak about my creative process. Uh, so um, uh, if you could pull up my presentation, um, I will uh, talk you through my uh, the way that I work. First of all, I have to say that in my creative process, I use imagination to create and in, even influence reality. And when I say imagination, uh, I don't refer to just my own personal uh, imaginary worlds. By that, I mean that I tap into something that Carl Jung um, called collective unconscious. Um, which is like a big library of shared imagery and uh, collective imagery and knowledge that everyone is born with because of shared uh, ancestral experiences. Uh, Henri Corbin, who was a French philosopher and scholar of Islamic mysticism, used the term imaginal realm uh, that exists between the physical worlds and the world of pure spirit. Corbin believed that the imaginal realm is not simply a product of human imagination, but rather a separate reality that exists independently of human consciousness. And through my paintings, which is my main uh, medium of self-expression, and I use mainly acrylic paint and also a lot of mixed media. I, I use a lot of Murano glass, for example. So through my paintings, I bring that invisible reality forward and I make it visible and accessible to others. So this way, my paintings, I could say, become some kind of talismans. And so they are infused with meaning through the symbols which bring change and transformation. Next slide. So... Um, <laughs> Okay. Um, in terms of this, you know, oh. my role of bringing the invisible uh, to the visible um, world, I don't see the slide. Okay, well, I will read out the quote that I wanted to uh, show, but basically there, there is a, there, I used to have I used to know somebody called Marcel Paquet. He was a Belgian philosopher, and um, he uh, he he was very he was he liked my art, and he wrote um, 
an essay about it, a philosophical essay. So he said that every form dissimulates the endless movement of the forces that compose it. And he said that Uslada brings these forces to light and gives visual expression to their vibrations, their dancing, whirling intricacy. So I see that my presentation is not appearing. If I should go on or not, let me know. I'd like to show some of my paintings. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Something is about to appear, so let's hope. <laughs> yeah, so this is the quote that I just um, read out. We can move on to the next slide. Right, here you go. So in my art, there are many symbols, such as fish, oceans, birds, flowers. They always represent something much more abstract, actually. So for example, here you can see uh, one of my paintings from the series called The Flow. Um, and it's it's sort of a, a series of oceanic uh, paintings with fish, a lot of fish and sort of uh, symbols of the ocean, elements of the ocean. And it's, it's an ab abstraction. So it's a reminder that when we break free from our limiting beliefs, we then we are able to abandon ourselves to the flow of life. So the, the name of the paintings of the series is The Flow. And then we are able to swim freely um, like fish in the water. And eventually we reach the state of freedom whereby we're able to meet ourselves deeply. Next slide. Quite often my own paintings invite me on a very deep uh, transformational personal journey. Like for example, this one that you see, which is called Ancestral Song. Um, when this painting, was born, I started living through a series of, of quite unexpected events and situations. And I went deeply into research about my roots. Um, I have many nations behind me, so to say. I'm a mix of all sorts of different nationalities. And I started digging into that. And I started having a lot of understanding and also compassion for all of the challenges that my um, my family and my ancestors went through and so it's as if this painting opened in a completely new door into a completely new reality and also what was especially beautiful in this case was that i discovered a lot of hidden talents within my family that i wasn't even aware about next slide And so speaking about these hidden gems inside of us, hidden jewels, the talents that sometimes we don't even know about. Um, I, I wrote a poem about this and there's even a series of paintings, small sculptural mixed media paintings called Hidden Jewel. And this is the poem that you see in front of you and I'm gonna read it out. You've seen the truth so many times. So why do you still choose those lies? The darkness comes and then it goes. The truth is always there below. All you must do is close your eyes and dream again the dream of light. The hidden jewel is in you. It's you who needs to see the truth. Next. And so here um, you see that, you, actually I put here a uh, paragraph from an interview so on the, on the right here um, from an interview that was published on the blog of dot art back in 2021 and here I spoke about art's mission and uh, I also I want to see uh, to say that actually my intention is the intention behind my art is to show it to the world to share it with the world and make it more known by more people and this is actually not at all an egoic kind of wish but uh, it's rather some kind of a promise and an obligation to my muse uh, which or who uh, I would say which uh, it's just a source of inspiration for me generally speaking 
um, inspired me for endless creativity and joy. And um, my muse wants to be seen and celebrated uh, for her or its tremendous transformational power and healing also, the healing capacity. And my muse has inspired me to step into my own sovereignty. Um, and that was a very strong, some kind of an initiation that I went through with my art. And I want my muse also to inspire everyone to embrace their own sovereignty and their own inner beauty. Um, my muse is here to bring the spark of light to the world and you know, one painting at a time. And I want my paintings to serve as mirrors uh, reflecting the endless beauty of the people who feel connected to them. So, and so here you go. So an example of one of the paintings called A Return to Freedom. Um, yeah, so um, basically I, I mean, also just the, the last thing to finish to finish uh, my presentation, I just wanted to say also that my artistic philosophy is very much included or rather expressed uh, in my artist name because Uslada in Russian, it's, it's my native, it's my mother tongue. It's not a very commonly used word and I chose it because it has a lot of different meanings. It's, it's a celebration of inner beauty. It, so the source of inner bliss and, uh, you know, inner joy. And this is exactly, so it's difficult to translate it, but this is exactly what I want to bring into the world you know, through my art. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Uslada. That, that was beautiful, beautiful work. And now I want to introduce you to our next dot art artist, who's Osan Turkan, and he's a new media artist. Uh, hello. Yep. Yep. Uh, hello. It's a pleasure and uh, being with you here, and um, and welcome everybody. And let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ozan Turkan. I, I'm a new media artist uh, based in here in Vienna. And I will. I will. I will. Start with how I start my career in new media, and it was uh, right after after I received my classical art education in Salamanca, Spain, and I then I moved to Barcelona. Then I started uh, started my new media career and with, with my uh, masters uh, in multimedia. In that time, it, the name was mostly like multimedia. Then it. In, in time, it changed to new media art. And it, it, at the beginning in Barcelona, it, it was all, it was all, um, for me, it was so exciting that uh, I can combine that uh, with different media elements, with, uh, with the image, uh, with the art and science and art, and also, also uh, coding and mathematics, uh, combine it with the art and create artworks uh, with all these elements, and uh, for me, it was the it was the just perfect combination. And uh, it was 20 years ago. Uh, since then, I am I am into very much into uh, new media art practices. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, for me, the key experience was the was the this combination actually, and the experimental aspect aspect of the of the new media. Uh, and so I can uh, I can I can play with it and I can use it and I can decompose the elements and uh, compose it again and and uh, that that kind of experimental freedom and it it, 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 uh, it attracted me very very much and then I, I'm really enjoying it actually. Um, let me share my uh, my online presence here my website i'm not uh, 
uh, yeah, can you see it first? Okay. Yeah, uh, this is my website, ozanfikon.art. I'm not gonna dive into the details because you know we have a limited time here. And but anybody who uh, who are interested and can check the website, I have uh, all my recent works, uh, artworks here, and it's updated. And my I, I'm a research artist actually over 20 years, and my main my main subject, my main uh, focus is uh, fractal geometry in nature, and and the generative systems uh, that uh, how it creates itself and recreates itself and 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 and, and, and how it uses this, this generative system to 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 give birth and existence and my most mo i'm mostly like um, conducting research uh, projects like this one aurora is the is the uh, uh, digital archive project it, it's my last uh, from the, my last exhibition. Uh, this is about the biodiversity and the uh, fractal geometry structures in in biodiversity. And uh, to create the, the artworks, we we uh, scanned um, biodiversity heritage library over two million elements. Uh, like here, you can see it, and I will do a video and play and. Um, yeah, those elements are in the in the biodiversity touch library. It's open source and it is it is a very big collection. And sorry about that. Uh, it's a very big collection and collected over the years, developed over the years by the scientists who uh, who. Um, uh, conducted research about the biodiversity in remote parts of in the world, like uh, Darwin himself and uh, other other uh, scientists, mostly from from Spain, England, uh, Portugal, the France. And uh, this part is the uh, first part of the, the project, in which is uh, which is fauna. And now I am starting the, the second part, which will be the, uh, focused on the, on the flora. Uh, so it is basically fauna, uh, flora and fauna, and all the uh, all the um, biodiversity uh, uh, archive. Um, uh, yes, as I said, my central focus is uh, fractal geometry in nature, and including us, of course, including myself, and uh, and it's my approach to understand the nature, actually, to understand the realm we are in it. Uh, it's it's my it's my way to 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 understand the nature to, through the geometry and the and the, the fractal structures uh, that we see in the nature. Um, of actually, the, if if I highlight the materials or techniques that I am using it, it's basically it's basically um, the simple coding. But I'm always uh, starting with from the idea and and with the text. And text is very important for me before the visualize it before uh, it is uh, already in in uh, in images or moving images i always write the text and and uh, and uh, of course sketches and develop it uh, with the with the uh, uh, classic material then i i start the coding and the and the and the creating the images right thank um, you oh, sorry, yeah. yeah no very very beautiful work and it's really interesting um, working with fractals, it's so organic, and I, I feel like as the technology advances, there's the old yeah. saying, you know, bringing art to life. But literally, some of your art looks like it could become alive itself um, as it, you know, relies on the fractals and, and that organic nature. So, very, yeah. very interesting. Thank you. Thank you for sharing Thank you. that.
I'll Thank turn you. it off to Dean for our next dot artist. Dean, yes. So our, our next dot artist is Katerina Belkina, and she's a pictorialist, photographer, and painter. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm happy to be uh, a part of this webinar. And uh, let me a little bit introduce myself and my art. I'm an artist career um, about uh, for about 20 years. And um, uh, 10 years ago, I moved to Germany and here I'm working. And basically, um, I would like to, uh, to tell you a little bit about my uh, my way in uh, how I, um, I became an artist. And uh, let me uh, show my web uh, website. I got a classical drawing and uh, painting education. And uh, then I studied photography. And um, all my skills as painting, photography, and computer uh, graphic led me to my uh, unique style. One moment. Um, let's let's show. And um, my art uh, based on photography and digital painting. Is it now, is it now sharing? Is it is it sharing? Is it is it uh, to see my uh, web uh, website? So uh, the topic uh, uh, I um, I think uh, there are a lot of things that I did in my childhood time. Uh, for example, painting and photography, and my uh, uh, passion to uh, digital art. Uh, this everything, it's a kind of a let me to my unique style. And also, uh, I would love to uh, perform me in a young age um, uh, with a dancing. And that's why it's also maybe uh, through this, I got the idea to be, uh, to use myself as a model for uh, my artworks. And um, and then uh, uh, the topic, uh, the topics that I actually use for my art talks is um, uh, all often connected with, with my private experience. Uh, let me show uh, some uh, some of my art talks of the early early series. You can see uh, that I use. Um, uh, I start uh, to use uh, the combination of uh, um, photography and real painting. Here you can see uh, some examples. But later I decided uh, to, uh, to go to the style of digital drawing and uh, the process. I can explain uh, the technical process of my art. I make uh, some sketches at first, then I go in the process of uh, inner thinking, and then I imagine what type of character I need for this uh, uh, for this story, and I search location. Usually, I shoot myself as a character. In the end, all my art is not self-portraits. Um, and I just use myself as an actor for my stories. And I love to tell the stories. Then I transform my my thoughts, my ideas, and emotions into artistic image. Then I doing some research, where to shoot, how to, uh, what what will be the topic. And for the shooting, I have no studio and no special studio light. I used always uh, my living location and daylight. After uh, some shoots, uh, sometimes I combine several images in one. I make some compilation and program. I use a Photoshop and call it uh, digital drawing. The whole process of um, 
a realization takes uh, one month, sometimes uh, more. And I use a, um, I, I work on different layers and use use the brushes as I'm painting on canvas, but I do this digital. And my goal to turn photography to be the painting style, to create a, a dreaming effect of my art, like it's reality, but it, in the same time, it's it's um, remind a dream. When the work is ready, it goes to printing, and there are prints of a limited edition on archive paper with a signature and certification. My artwork participates in many exhibitions, and uh, it's not only the, uh, the I'm uh, right now I'm doing not only the uh, photography and digital painting. I would like also to now to try the video art. And um, uh, when I look back, and uh, it, can, it can sound strange, but uh, exactly a limitation of some different possibilities built my, uh, uh, my characteristic, my artist style. Uh, for example, uh, in the past, when I started, I had not enough uh, good uh, photo technique and I try to combine several shots in one, and uh, then also to try to paint uh, some extra details. And uh, in the end, um, uh, it gave me um, a step by step to come to uh, to my uh, very special uh, style, my special media that it's a uh, kind of between uh, uh, painting and photography, and. Um, Topics are always uh, uh, different, but I choose to uh, 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 to express something about uh, every everybody can go through the life. For example, the loneliness in the city, about the role of uh, women in society, and also a lot of different things. Very beautiful. Katharina, very Thank you beautiful. so much. And very interesting how you, you evolved through uh, from <laughs> photography and paint together to the digital platforms to using yourself as as the primary actress in your in your visual story. Very beautiful. Thank you so much. Dean, I'll hand it off to you to introduce our final dot artist for today. I know sure. we're running a little bit behind schedule, but I hope everyone will bear with us. We'll have a, a little bit of time for questions afterwards. But thank you everyone for um, staying with us. Dean? Yep. So our, our, our final discussant is Simon Freund, and he's a conceptual artist. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Simon Freund. I'm from Germany, born in Germany, and um, I'm a conceptual artist, which basically means that the concept is the core of everything I do. Um, I didn't uh, start as an artist, though, in my professional life. I first was a fashion designer for almost eight years, where I was running my own uh, fashion brand and also store in Berlin. And uh, the brand, I established the brand because I wanted to make people aware of global warming to um, make a really sustainable fashion project. And after eight years trying to do this, I realized that producing more clothing, no matter how sustainable it is, um, is not the sustainability I'm after. So I quit the whole project um, shut down the store and decided that from this time on, I would continue raising awareness for the topics that are important to me, which are sustainable uh, sustainability and kind of living life together as humans on the planet in the yeah, best way possible um, and to from then on work as an artist and on my website which I will share now um, you find all of my work um, which started in 2015 and most of it's very minimal so it's a very minimal approach to very um, yeah, pressing questions. And here you can see this was the first work after I was working as a fashion designer. Uh, it still kind of relates to the, to the fashion and the beauty world. 
And then in 2016, I created a website called allipossess.com where I would photograph literally everything um, I possess. And I really loved the idea of online installations because it's um, yeah, not very physical and it's very easy to share. And most importantly for me, it's free for everyone to visit. Um, so I continued these online installations in a similar topic with countless.info in 2017, where I would share my um, bank account um, publicly online for everyone to see. And um, yeah, so in between there is like also physical um, objects that I produced, but uh, I'm really excited about online uh, installations like here five rooms.cam where I installed cameras in all five rooms of my personal apartment in Munich or and this is my uh, first dot art domain composition in red blue and yellow and this one I would actually like to invite everyone to enter so if um, you maybe can share the link to the website in the chat and if you enter the website, you will see a Mondrian-like uh, painting and also the title composition in red, blue and yellow should remind you of uh, the same artwork by Piet Mondrian with the same title. And when you visit the website and you click on the squares, the color changes. And what I really like about this piece is that um, no matter where you are, you can always change it and it's always live. And it, at the same time, it only exists when you actually visit the website. So um, it needs the viewer and the viewer's participation to come to come alive. Uh, didn't, it, didn't it work to show it? Mm. Ah, because it opened in a new tab, obviously. Yeah, and while this is fun to just be clicking around uh, there, it's uh, like really important for me to see yeah, anything that happens on the world as a community. And um, that's why I really like artworks that is like, um, yeah, open for everyone and where everyone can interact. And uh, this artwork is, and I have a similar artwork called a place we share.com, which you will also find on my portfolio. Um, are more or less the artworks that left uh, or led me to um, my latest passion, so to say, which is actually trying to move away from art or like um, the next step for me to go into cooperative thinking. So I'm really excited lately about uh, cooperatives all over the world, like supermarket cooperatives or anything that can work uh, as a community. And I feel like from my fashion background over the art world, uh, this will be the next thing um, that I will be working on, cooperatives. Great. Uh, thank you, Simon. I mean, fascinating, um, the variety we've seen today. I feel like your art, especially this piece you're sharing now, it's like quantum physics, right? It's, it's the art, you know, it's Schrodinger's cat. Does, does it exist? It doesn't exist until there's someone there to to see it and play with it. Very so, true. So um, really, really interesting. Um, thank you so much um, for joining us and presenting your art, uh, Simon and and everyone else. We have a few minutes. Uh, Anastasia, do we have any questions from the audience for any of our artists? Well. I think it was uh, really interesting. We're coming up at the top of the hour. Um, the variety of creativity that we saw today is, is pretty remarkable when you think about it. Uh, everything from, you know, transitioning from Hollywood special effects to digital art and, and, and how that influenced uh, Ronan, I think was really interesting. Um, you know, I mentioned the art therapy at the beginning of our talk, and it was really nice to hear Uslada mention uh, Jung and his influence and how she focuses on her healing muse and, and leveraging her art, uh, which is very much in line with art therapy. In fact, 
when we visited the uh, uh, art therapy department at George Washington University, they have a big sign on the wall that says Forever Jung, uh, which is uh, a testament to, to his role in art therapy. So that was great. Um, Ozan, the, the new media and multimedia that you shared is really interesting. It was especially interesting to see how you're using fractal, fractals and kind of the organic nature um, to bring that art to life, which is really, really great. Um, Katharina, as we mentioned, your ability to use yourself as a subject and, and uh, the crossover from photography to painting to digital art, I think was really inspiring. And, uh, and again, ending with Simone and uh, the minimalism is really, really interesting. Um, minimalism has been a very interesting trend. I had a friend once who, who literally sold all of his things and, and changed his life so that all of his possessions fit in a single backpack. And um, he did that for a number of years and just traveled around as a nomad with virtually everything he owned in a single back backpack. And um, I enjoyed your minimalist art. I especially was thinking about the comb and the, the, the teeth missing from the comb and what that might represent. So really, really interesting. Dean, did you have any uh, final remarks? Yeah. Well, before? I guess I, I, I do have a, a question for our artists. And somewhat in alignment with the interest of dot art but um perhaps we can start with um like Uslada or katarina to talk a little bit about uh their thinking when they're doing this artwork um are they thinking about it in terms of how it's advancing their own own well-being or the well-being of those who are going to be viewing it So I'll I'll go on. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So I have two questions here. First, I will uh, I will answer your question, Dean. Um, yeah, my my own art has been a tremendous. Um, it has ha it has a tremendous power. It has had it throughout the whole process to um, to sort of come to deeply to my own essence i can say that it's it's not an easy journey for sure it's a transformational journey because you know there's no end and there's no there's no beginning and there's no end to art so many people for example ask me the question you know how long does it take you to make a painting and i'm never able to limit my painting to you know, to the moment, uh, starting from the time that I put some uh, paint on a canvas. For me, my art began probably decades ago. Some of my paintings, the inspiration comes from, from my childhood, from the way that my parents were with me. My mom was inspiring me to, to look at the beauty of the world. So it's a very long journey and indeed it's a very i can say uh, healing and transformational journey and it's, it inspires me to connect to myself but i think what's really more is that it serves like a mirror for other people uh, to see their own beauty i think my big dream is to sort of use my art as this kind of a mirror those people who find it beautiful or the, those who find something harmonious in it, they actually are looking at themselves. That's how I feel it. So, yes, there are many aspects of, as you said, this healing power and transformation. And just the last thing I'm going to address that question somebody was asking me about, you know, how do I survive in the great climate of, of Europe? Very good question. I don't know. <laughs> And I live in Belgium. This is actually, um, there are a lot of great days there, but um, I get inspired also by travel. I cannot survive without travel. So like some of the paintings you've seen there, they come, they, they were born um, after a certain trip. Like the last one I was showing, the, the, the yellow one with many birds that came after two weeks in Brazil. At some point, you know. So I keep myself alive with my own colors, I guess. And Katarina, you wanted to add something? 
Yeah, I, uh, actually, I agree with Oslada. There, there is uh, no uh, point when uh, the uh, the art starts and where is the uh, a final point, uh, because when it's, for example, artwork is ready, is not uh, is is not the point because it's going uh, further to the uh, viewer to audience, and I think it's uh, continue to uh, to leave to uh, communicate uh, uh, with the world already and uh, there is a, a no uh, some uh, some limitation points where is it that's why also inspiration it's uh, it also kind of a process that all art is going through all all the life and um, my idea that inspiration, we can uh, we can take from just uh, our routine from our daily life and everything what uh, what we do every everything what everybody can do it can be in art actually and uh, they uh, as an artist i i think um, i feel myself just a representative of some ideas that already uh, uh have existence that already exists somewhere around us and uh, my task uh, just to to go in this flow and uh to try uh to to build my own atmosphere uh, to show it beautiful thank you katarina thank you zlada uh thank you to all of our dot artists today this was uh, really inspiring uh i feel very inspired by this range of art. Of course, Dean, thank you so much for hosting with us and sharing the information about Museum Magazine. Uh, I wanna wish everyone a very safe, happy, healthy holiday season. And if you'll excuse me, just a little bit of a sales plug at the end, I just wanna remind you that a dot .art domain and website makes a great gift for the artists in your life. Uh, every domain at www.get.art comes with a free website builder and it literally takes minutes and it's a great gift. I actually made one as a gift for my 10 year old grandson and for my 88 year old mother, both of whom are talented artists for their ages and presented them with their own portfolio websites as a gift. I took pictures of their artwork as a surprise and surprised them. So it's a great gift, easy to use. At the end of this show, there'll be a short video showing you how to use the website builder if you're interested and again, well, we really want to thank you all for joining us today. We hope you'll join us again for our next Meet the Dot Artist webinar, which will be early next year. Uh, and everyone have a wonderful holiday season and a very safe, happy, and healthy and prosperous new year. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for the Dot Art team behind the scenes, Ross, Anastasia, Rachel, and everyone who helped put this webinar together. Bye-bye. Thank you.